The entire Shan Yu family continues to be the inspiration behind Seattle's mission to celebrate, connect, and care for the natural world that we all share. The research and relationship building goes on with these animals every day, but is not often seen by our guests. So it is our great pleasure to present to you the Shamu Story. Ladies and gentlemen, Shamu. I'd like to introduce trainer Tom. Thanks a lot, James. We're excited to be here today to share with you how we care for these amazing animals. The Shamu story began when a large adult male killer whale was accidentally caught in some fishing nets up in British Columbia. That whale was named Namu after a local fishing port and he was soon moved to Seattle, where he became the first killer whale to be on public display up in the Pacific Northwest. A young female killer whale soon joined him and was named Shamu, which is a contraction of the word she and Namu. Now Shamu then became the first killer whale to travel by airplane when she came here to SeaWorld San Diego in 1965. She made a powerful and instant connection with the public who knew very little about these animals. We continue to celebrate her name through our entire Shamu family. All right, now we're going to introduce you to a couple of members of that family. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome to Orchid. Uh, Orchid is a 24-year-old female. She was born right here in this pool in September of 1988. 19 feet long, not quite 6,000 pounds. Now we've got another whale out here, obviously, over here with Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the largest whale we have out of our nine killer whales. Weighing in at 9,500 pounds. Say hello to Ulysses. Now he's performing what we call a spin swim, and this lets you get you a good look at the, what's called disruptive coloration, or counter shading. That coloration is a good way that they can sneak up on their prey. Now also notice the pectoral flippers. The pectoral flippers are on the sides of the body and they're used for steering and stopping, and there are five large bones inside those flippers resembling the human hand. Now also notice the white oval eye spots. Off to your right hand side, we've got orchid coming out of what we call a mouth open swim. So you can look at the eye patch. That's the white oval spot on the side of her head. The eyes are located directly in front of the eye patch right near the corner of the mouth. And in that mouth are conically shaped teeth are used for grasping and swallowing their prey whole. They do not chew their food. Here at SeaWorld, these animals get between 100 and 200 pounds of restaurant quality fish each and every day. Equipped with these adaptations, it's no wonder that killer whales are the ocean's top predator and have mastered many techniques of catching their prey. Killer whales are among the fastest of all marine mammals. So what do you say, guys? Let's show them what you got. Using their powerful tail flips for propulsion, the killer whales can reach speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. Now, you can see these animals are incredible swimmers, but what's most amazing is their ability to lift as much as 9,000 pounds completely up and out of the water. Very nice orchid. With up to 56 chronically shaped teeth used for ripping and tearing, it's no wonder the killer whale is the ocean's top predator. So the same training techniques that used for the big, impressive behaviors that you just saw are also utilized in performing daily medical examinations. Our animals are trained to calmly accept regular medical procedures. This allows us to more easily diagnose and treat illness. We call this type of training husbandry training. And here's Tom to talk more about husbandry training. Yeah, in addition to the high energy behaviors you see in the shows, we train the animals on a variety of different husbandry behaviors, and these are the behaviors that we train them on that allow us to take better care of them. We collect urine from all of our females, and by looking at the urine, we can tell exactly what's going on with them as far as their, their hormones, whether or not they're pregnant. 
And we also train a very important behavior here with all of our whales. It's called a tail fluke present. Looks like Petey's got orchid in one right now. Now this is an important behavior to train because this is where we get voluntary blood samples. The veins of the killer whale run very close to the surface and are very easy for our veterinarians to see. So once every couple months, they come down and we get voluntary blood samples on all of our whales. By looking at that blood, we know exactly what's going on with the animal's health. Now we also train them on uh, different husbandry behaviors, such as sliding up on a scale once a week. And we have a measuring tape. We measure the whales that are still growing about once a month. Now by looking at this data, we can track actual growth rates, which is something that's very hard to do out in the wild. Thanks a lot, Orchid, for giving us a good look at a poop present. Like most of the ocean's marine mammals, killer whales have developed complex sounds which they use to communicate and to explore their environment. For over 12 years, research has been done right here at Shamu Stadium on killer whale vocal development. We have a series of underwater microphones called hydrophones embedded in the floor and walls of the underwater viewing pool. Using these hydrophones allows us to recognize what sounds the animals are making and to localize which animal is making the call. Through this research, we found that killer whale vocal development is very similar to that of human language development. Whale calves start by making cries. They then move on to babbling. And then start to imitate the adults. Well, from these vocalizations, we've been able to train uh, several different vocalizations that can be heard up above the water, and we're going to give you some examples of those right now. So through our experience, we found the most successful trainers are those who learn along with the animals. It takes some time, but trainers focus on building strong relationships with the killer whales, and they do this by creating training sessions that are interesting, stimulating, and just plain fun. Let me introduce Becky, who's going to talk more about how we train killer whales. Well, thank you very much. Hi, everybody. We're going to give you a unique opportunity right now to see a training session in action, a true training session. And we do a variety of different types of training sessions and sessions throughout our day. And we use the acronym HELPERS. H is for husbandry. Tom told you a little bit about husbandry. And again, basically, it's the health maintenance of the animal. We are the first line of defense. So we want to make sure that all of our animals are nice and healthy. If we notice any changes in their health, we can take a look at all sorts of different types of their body. and ask the veterinarians to come down and take a look if need be. And we do exercise sessions, just like it sounds. You guys need to go to the gym, go out for a run, get your muscles moving, get your heart pumping and your lungs pumping, blood going out through your body to make sure that you are healthy. Now in order for our killer wells to be healthy, that's another aspect of it. So we want to make sure that we get their blood pumping as well. We will do that several times a week. Next we have a learning session. Now that's what I told you about the training session. It's an opportunity for our killer whales to learn not only brand new behaviors, but things that they might be having challenges with, or you could also be training trainers how to train killer whales. Next, we have play and relationship sessions. Now again, they are just what they sound like. We play with them, we relate with them. We want to make sure that we have a nice, strong relationship with these animals, and one way that we can do that are play games and hang out with them and do the things that they enjoy. And last, we have shows. And what you guys are going to be seeing right now is a training session with Ulysses. He's going to be learning a flicker bow. Now what you're going to be seeing throughout the interaction is a number of different tools. You can see Mike over here with a long black target pole. And what that does for the killer whales is communicate where they want them to be. Now we want them to jump in the middle of the pool. We obviously don't have a 50 foot target pole, but we can use something like an ice cube. But initially we're going to train it with that target pole and we can guide them through certain behaviors just by manipulating that target pole. And we do have different sizes and shapes of the target pole. And we also have our whistle. So around Katie's neck, you're going to see the whistle that communicates to the killer whales they've done the correct behavior. When you hear that whistle blow, feel free to, to cheer him on because that means he did exactly what we wanted him to do. So what we're going to be seeing Katie do is roll him over. So he is going to roll over. Now he weighs over 9,000 pounds, so it does take a little bit of time. 
So there's the rollover, there's the bridge or the whistle blow. Now again, she's gonna reinforce and feel free to clear it to your mom. I told you you could. Now that was a very, very easy step for Ulysses. They all know how to roll over. And she reinforced them by giving them a big handful of fish. You're gonna see a variety of different types of reinforcements throughout the session as well. All right, the next step she might do is roll him over and get him to kick his tail flukes. Or actually, she's gonna ask him to do a fast swim while flicking his tail flukes, which is kind of close to the behavior he's gonna be working on. So look at the perimeter of the pool here when he flicks his tail flukes. Whoop. Now he missed a portion of the signal. We want him to actually take his tail flukes and kind of kick him up a little bit up out of the water. Now watch what Katie does when he comes back because he actually did the incorrect behavior. Now he went right back to where she was standing previously and she's just going to give him a three second pause. What this communicates to Ulysses is that he did the incorrect behavior, but as long as he comes back with a good attitude, which he did, there's another opportunity for reinforcement. So there's the rollover uh, signal. Now she's asking him to kick his tail flukes. There it is. Very nice, good job. Now the goal of this session is actually to have him do a bow or a jump where he's gonna come up out of the water and re-enter head first, only his belly will be up. And when he's in the air, we want him to kick his tail flukes very, very hard. So that's what Mike's gonna be helping him on in just a second. Let's see if he gets that flicker. Fast swim, there it is. So you probably heard Katie whistle, but we also have an underwater tone that means the same exact thing as the whistle, but it helps the killer whales hear if, it, if in fact they are underwater. All right, so here's the rollover. Flick your tail flips and do a bow or a jump. Mike's gonna be helping him with the target because we wanna make sure he's up and out of the water and then kicks his tail flips. Look for it. There it is. Now what just happened is that he missed Katie's bridge. He didn't hear the whistle. So although he did the behavior correct, he didn't hear the whistle, so she just gave him that three second pause. Now you guys are probably like, but he did it right. He did do it right. It was very healthy anticipation of doing the correct behavior in the second position, which is eventually where we want it. But because he didn't hear the whistle, we technically can't reinforce that. So what she did was gave him that three second pause, but then reinforced him, which kind of means the same. So we're gonna try it again. We're gonna see if he responds to the whistle and also to Mike tapping the target up. Oh, we want him to get nice and high. <laughs> well, if you hear Mike laughing, the reason he's laughing is because that time he did the ventral bow or the belly bow, so his belly was up, but he forgot to kick his flukes. Now Katie bridged because she thought, oh, for sure he's gonna do it, and she thought he, he did, but then he actually didn't do the behavior correct. So what we do in that case is just kind of go, all right, well, my mistake, because we do make mistakes too. And it looks like Katie might ask for it one more time. So here's the rollover. There's the flick and the bow. So listen again for the whistle and look again for that jump behavior with the kick of the tail flips. There it is, very nice, that was awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for you, Lissy. You did a great job. Well, now that you guys have had an opportunity to see a training session, we'd like to show you some of the more spectacular behaviors that you'll see later on in our One Ocean show. Now, if you're sitting over here, hello. And if you're sitting over here, hi, guys. You are sitting in our soap zone. If you're sitting in the first 10 rows of our stadium, it's a good chance that you could get wet with 55 degree icy cold salt water. Now's your chance to move to higher and drier ground. Well, if you guys are ready, and you guys are ready, let's go for it.
The final chapter of the Shamu story has yet to be written. It's about you and the difference you can make. Killer whales are found in oceans throughout the world, but their ocean homes face many threats. Actions that you can take to help keep our world clean can make a big difference. If you'd like to become more involved in the support of killer whales and other animals, you visit our SeaWorld Bush Gardens Conservation website at swbg-conservationfund.org. When you come back later today to see our One Ocean Show at 4.30, we hope you remember all the things that occur behind the scenes. We are honored to share the Shamu story with you and hope it's inspired you to celebrate, connect, and care for all animals. If you have any questions, we'll be sticking around for a while after the show. We hope you have enjoyed the Shamu story. Have a great day at SeaWorld. Bye-bye, everybody.